What's up everyone? Good morning. My name is Nate and this is Good Morning Liberty. Today I'm going to go a little bit further into the Colin Kaepernick thing, the NFL protest, everything that's going on with that, why it's happening, um, whether or not things are as bad as they seem, uh, why these guys shouldn't be allowed to kneel on the field, and uh, what is the actual root cause of what these people are kneeling about? because I don't think that's something that people are really talking about. Is it racism or is it something else? I don't know. So, I did a little video yesterday about Colin Kaepernick and talking about his Nike deal, which is going on, you know, good for him, out there getting that money, that's good. Um, here's what I wanted to talk about. I had a couple people messaging back and forth on the page I'm still going back and forth, but I wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit deeper into it. These guys are kneeling for a cause, and now it seems like people are telling them that they can't. Well, is it okay to tell someone that they can't protest? Because we do have the First Amendment, things like that. We, we've got that in that country that's protected. You know, how can you tell someone that they can't protest? Is it just because you don't believe in what they're protesting about so we can control that? The honest fact of the matter is, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if we believe in it or we don't believe in it. What does matter, and Belle, you stay over there. My cat wants to come talk about this, and this is my time right now, Belle. All right, so what does matter in this whole thing is the fact that these guys are at work while they're doing it. So that's the only way that I look at it whenever we say that they can or they cannot do this. These guys are at work right now. And we have to remember that. Emotions or no emotions, what they're protesting is true or it isn't true, those things don't matter. What does matter is that these guys are at their place of work, they are employed, and they are at work and they are protesting. Now, how many jobs around the country can you go into and decide that you are going to protest something while you're at work? Can you go, I mean, can you go into Walmart and while you're working, you know, every once in a while get out a sign that shows your political beliefs, you know? Can, uh, can I go into an office job uh, and just, just stand up and, you know, yell my, my protest during work, anything like that? The reason that I can't do that is because that would obviously be against the rules of whatever place I worked. And uh, you wouldn't say, well, that's my First Amendment right to stand up and protest right now. You can't stop me from protesting, can you? Well, actually you can because it's their building and they're employing you right now and they can stop you from doing things inside of that building. They can stop you doing anything that they want to inside of that building while you're working for them. And that's what's going on while these people are on the field. Now, we also have a little bit of a conversation about could these guys be doing anything to help? You know, is kneeling on the field helping some kind of cause? Certainly it's causing a big uproar about it, but is it actually speaking about the cause? Is it actually doing anything whatsoever to help? You know. I think that when it started, it was about bringing attention to what was going on. I do, I do believe that. Now I think it's more about um, a lot of the players don't want to be controlled by the organization and they're actually fighting for their right to protest. And that's really all they're fighting for, honestly. They're, they're not fighting for whatever the cause is because if they cared about the cause, well, then all these months in the off season, they'd be taking their millions of dollars and starting all kinds of charities, all kinds of political action groups. They'd be starting all kinds of different social media pages. They'd be going around doing speaking engagements because they're famous. They'd be doing all kinds of things to bring light to, to this fact. Now, what they're doing now is they're fighting for their right to protest. That's all they're doing. doesn't matter what they're protesting about anymore. I guarantee it. They're mad that someone's telling them that they can't kneel on the field. So now they have to kneel on the field or they're just doing what someone else is telling them to do, you know? So that's, that's actually what I do believe is going on right now. So 
One thing I wanna look into is the actual issue that we're kneeling about. Are cops killing black people at an, at an alarming rate? Do, is it black people getting killed and white people don't get killed by cops? Um, are cops uh, just naturally racist? Are, are all white cops racist? They hate black. We've given racist white people guns and they're going out there and killing black people. Is, is, that what's, is that what's going on? I don't believe that's what's going on. I don't think a lot, of, a lot of people, even if you do believe in this movement, I don't think a lot of people believe that that's what's going on. But what is, what is the issue here? Because it would seem, if you watch the news, like it's just black people that are getting killed by cops all the time. If you're a white person, everything's fine, right? Like I get, if I were to get arrested, the guy would probably give me a cup of coffee in the back of his car and play whatever kind of music I liked, you know? And he'd probably carry me to the car uh, also because I didn't feel like walking. Is that, you know, that's kind of the picture that would, that's getting painted right now is uh, that if you're, if you're white and you get arrested, everything's all fine. You know, the guy shakes your hand before, you know, before the whole process. And if you're black, he just immediately starts, you know, beating you to death with, with something. Um, so, is this the case? Obviously, I don't think that that's the case. I know uh, that white people do have an issue getting arrested. I know white people have an issue when they get pulled over and get tickets. See, I think it has a lot to do with your attitude whenever you get uh, have an interaction with a police officer, first off. So, and I'm not saying this is white or black because I know a lot of people that have gotten pulled over, they get tickets. And then I know a lot of people that get pulled over, pulled over that don't get tickets. I'm one of the people that doesn't get tickets. And it's not because I'm white, because I know a lot of white people that get pulled over to get tickets all the time. I get pulled over a lot. I've been pulled over several times, times 10, several times 10 times. And um, I've had very, very, very few tickets, very few. Somehow I'm able to uh, be so extremely nice to the police officer uh, that I don't know what it is. I just don't get the ticket. I don't know what it is. I'm the most respectful person a police officer has ever met in their entire life. And I do think that that goes a long way. But now what am I doing? Am I saying that black people aren't respectful to cops? No, that's not what I'm saying. There's a root cause of the issue here. And a lot of our Republican followers might not like this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. There's a root cause of this issue. I believe that the root cause of this has everything to do with drug laws. Everything to do with drugs being illegal, with so much of our focus on police officers for getting drugs off the street, with stopping drug crime, you know, all these things, in my opinion, boil down to drugs. And I think over time, I believe that over time, cops have become conditioned and trained to look for a certain thing because there's so much emphasis placed on reducing drugs on the street that it is disproportionately hurting people of color, especially in most of these shootings that we hear about happen in urban areas, you know. Um, they're looking for, most of these are happening in high crime, you know, more drug use, things like that, those kind of areas. So what I believe is that what people could actually be doing is fighting to get rid of some of these drug laws, especially laws having to do with, with marijuana. Uh, we, we know that's gonna happen shortly anyway. But I do believe that we should be getting rid of some of these drug laws. Guys, if you're a Republican and that makes you mad or you're a conservative or constitutional conservative and that makes you mad, I'm sorry, but let me ask you this. Is it the job of the United States government to tell you whether or not you can do something to your own body? That's a simple question. Is it the job of the United States government to tell you that you can or cannot put, some, put harmful substances inside of your own body? I don't think so. I think it's an absolute atrocity today that we have prisons full of people who have never hurt anyone but themselves. That's it. We took people that were addicted to a drug 
that were addicted to a chemical and we just put them in a cage and they never hurt anyone except for themselves. And our solution is to lock them up. That's it. So we'll do a whole episode on drugs at some point in time. But what's happened over time is this has conditioned and trained police officers, in my opinion, to look for certain things. Instead of just looking and solving crimes and taking care of the traffic and doing the things that I believe they're, you know, they're supposed to be doing, their whole emphasis is on looking for drugs, looking for drug paraphernalia, searching people's cars, doing stuff, searching people's cars, that's a big one. You know, doing stuff like this that leads to what we're seeing right now. But what I will say is don't get stuck inside of your own echo chamber if you're someone who does believe in what these people are kneeling for. Don't get stuck inside of your own social media news echo chamber of your own beliefs all the time. This has happened to me recently. So when I remade my Facebook, started a new Facebook, I decided I was gonna follow one page. I follow Bernie Sanders on Facebook, that's it. So in my world, everything's falling apart. Socialism is taking over the United States. Uh, no one has any personal responsibility anymore. Everyone hates people who make money. Um, you know, we all hate every single business out there and that might be partially true, but in my world, it's way worse. It's way worse than what it actually is because I live inside this little Bernie Sanders echo chamber on Facebook. I just see what these people are talking about and they become my world around whenever I get on social media. This is what I see the world as. So don't get stuck inside of your echo chamber that only talks about when black people are getting killed by the police or only talks about how white people, you know, never get killed by police or never get beat up by cops or, uh, you know, these kind of things because you don't know if they're true or not. You're just seeing them posted on these little pages back and forth and you see it more and more and then you, it starts to become your worldview. So, you know, we are, are black people getting killed at a higher rate than white people. What we don't know it really is that, is that fact. We, what we see on the news does not accurately re represent what is going around in the world because if a white person gets killed by a cop, it's not news. No one would watch that. No one is outraged about that. So it doesn't make the news, it doesn't make the social media rounds when a white person who's unarmed gets killed by a cop. So you don't hear about it. It doesn't make the social media rounds when a white person gets beat up by a cop. You don't hear about it. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying it happens a ton, but what I am saying is that that does not come onto the news because people don't care about it because it's not one of these hot button issues, this racism issue that has to be on the news that gets people to watch it. So you see some of the advertisements. So don't live inside your own little echo chamber on this stuff, guys. There's a lot of things going on around the world that a lot of us don't even know about because we only follow one little piece of what we believe in and then that becomes your worldview. Trust me, it happened, it happened to me with the socialism thing. It happens all the time. So I decided I had to go like a libertarian page. I had to go like a free market page. I had to go like a positivity page, stuff like this. So whenever I got on Facebook, it wasn't just all doom and gloom all the time. And that really, that really does help. But anyway, I know that that was a long, drawn out thing. You know, I didn't hit everything I wanted to, but that's a long enough video for today. So go out there as my daily reminder, promote capitalism in some kind of way. We have a lot of socialism popping up and what they're doing is they're promoting their cause. They're promoting how socialism is going to fix everything for you. And that's an easy message. Hey, I'm gonna give you some stuff. Oh, you're gonna give me some stuff? Cool, I like it. Boom, socialism, let's have socialism. No, capitalism, hey, you need to work for some stuff. See, that's not as cool of an argument, guys. What we need to do is talk about how capitalism brings everything that we have in our lives gives every, everyone more possibilities in life.
you know, this football on TV with millions of people watching, someone kneeling down, the NFL wouldn't have happened and millions and millions and millions of people wouldn't be watching and caring about this on Facebook, created in a capitalist country, on the internet, <laughs> created in a capitalist country, watching on their cell phones, created in a capitalist country. We wouldn't have any possibility of talking about whether or not there's some kind of racism in the police if it weren't for capitalism. We wouldn't have the ability to even do that. So even if it's for things that you uh, do or don't agree with, you know, capitalism gives everyone the opportunity, gives everyone a chance all the time. Socialism does not. Go out there and promote capitalism today. We need it. We need more of it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.